Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons The Second Age. How are you all doing? Good. Pretty good. Right. Excellent. Ready to fight some demons or something. <laughs> Ready to fight some demons yeah. or something. Speaking of which, uh, who wants to go ahead and remind me of what happened the last time we played this game? Well, um, well last time we uh, had just uh, we had just arrived at this spooky looking fortress and we uh, did our usual thing when confronted with a potentially dangerous situation. Um, most of us stayed behind and I went on a scouting mission. But also, um, some of us still needed a uh, a little bit of a rest. So, um, we remembered to have our short rest and Aya went to scout out the walls and found something very peculiar. Uh, there was fucking no one there. Is Everything was deathly quiet. And there was no one patrolling the walls, or the perimeter, or the perimeter of the walls. There's just fucking no one there. Uh, so eventually, we approach. Uh, we try to to create a way to climb up the walls, but we do not succeed. Um, Arya makes it onto the walls, but is not able to leave a path for the rest of us to easily follow. So, unfortunately, and unfortunately, we make a lot of noise doing that as well. But as we find out, it's fine. There's fucking nobody around. Because Aya gets on top of the walls, and what does she see? Fucking nothing. Just more of those buildings and absolutely no people whatsoever. Um, so we move along a bit to the gatehouse. We're like, we'll just get, we'll just, you know, after, after figuring out how we're going to all get over the walls, we're just like, if there's no, you know, if there's no one around, might as well just open the gate. So we move down the walls, Aya gets into the gatehouse, and we finally find someone who's dead. It's one of the big forearm drow demon things that's just fucking sliced clean in half. Not weird at all. So uh, we get Clarus up, together they open the door, we walk inside. We have no idea why it's so, like, freaking quiet. It's slightly unnerving. Um, Only slightly. Our way. Yeah. Uh, so we're all wondering why the hell it's so quiet, and we head on through into this... Um, into this big... This big, uh, what turns out to be uh, a school of demonology. Ooh. Yes. Spooky. Um, and again, there's fucking no one in. Um, although this time we have some clues as to where the people are, because there's fucking blood, there's fucking blood smears everywhere. Uh, there's drow blood smears, there's, uh, there's humanoid blood smears, and we're thinking this is not good. Because there's no bodies anywhere, just a hell of a lot of blood. Uh, so using a combination of, uh, Comprehend Languages and the Compass, um, we navigate through, uh, Closing in on uh, this, uh, what's what's noted as an observation uh, deck, observation room, um, and yeah, as we're wandering through the corridors, we do start to find some bodies of more four-armed demon things, um, which is not a good sign. Uh, we start encountering more and more blood, uh, more drag marks as bodies have been clearly dragged away from where they were presumably killed. And everything's going a bit weird. Until eventually, we do actually find things moving. Um, we go into one room and there's three... Uh, three drow who are very... Who are equally surprised to see us. Um, and an encounter, a, a fight starts. But it turns out that they weren't drow at all. Um, they put up a, de a decent uh, fight. But uh, they turn out to be these weird, rubbery, uh, imitation, shape-shifting demons. Uh, not drow. Uh, but it's still only three of them, and we do dispatch them. Um, Grim takes a bit more of a beating, so rest in peace, the short rest. Um, it but it's okay. Yeah. It just means it's a good thing he got the short rest, because otherwise he'd have gone down. Um, yep. So yeah, we, we heal Grim a bit, We just we uh, and we push on. Um, more, more, more blood more bodies it's pretty damn ominous until eventually uh we come into this uh we come into this room in which we are currently where there is a rather unsettling sight um because in the right in the middle of the room is a giant pile of corpses absolutely huge pile of corpses um and a big scary portal uh which is being held open slash someone's trying to close it we don't really know um by this drow 
spirit woman thing. Um, we think she's non-responsive, and so like I'm suddenly like looking around for things that could suggest what the hell this is and where it goes. And uh, we find Elizabeth finally speaks, handing uh, Aya a bunch of books and books written in abyssal, saying, "Can you read these?" And hearing us, this uh, drow spirit uh, instantly recognizes us as the Amber Eagle. Um, she didn't instantly recognize you. Well, well, yeah, she recognizes us as. Well, she says you must be the Amber Eagle. Um, well, to to refresh you specifically, she said okay. uh, the Amber Eagle has arrived. Loth has a sense of humor. It seems. Yeah, and that was All where right. we ended, which was really ominous. And that's basically where we left off on that yeah. hella freaky cliffhanger. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as as we resume with all of you in the room, um, yeah, the the uh, the spirit speaks. The amber eagle has arrived. Loth has a sense of humor. It seems. Uh, she turns back to like focusing on the this portal in front of her and the energy streams that are slowly like sort of pulsing back and forth from her hands to this portal. Um. And ha half to you, half to herself, just mutters, perhaps she wishes to show me once again the folly of our desperation. Or maybe she's offering me a chance to undo my errors in judgment. Hmm. Well... Um, she only says that. She doesn't make any other moves, right? Uh, she doesn't. She doesn't move at all. Um, yeah. So, uh, like, she 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 turns her head towards you and like her shoulders a little bit, um, but it doesn't actually seem like she has a great deal of range of movement in her form. Hmm. So probably like you've uh, you're familiar with us then. Uh, without turning to look at you, she nods her head and says, "Yes." What 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 mistake of of judgment did you make? Uh, she lets out a low sigh and just says, "Take a look around you." Hmm. I, I'm guessing they were. Um friends at some point again just not nods without turning to face you um and just says friends colleagues allies are there are there any of you left in well because most of you have been. Uh, well, we we haven't actually found a living drow. She lets out a low sigh and just sort of says, "I imagine you will not. The amount of sacrifices needed to complete a ritual of that level would have been significant." Has it been completed? She nods. Is that what this portal is then? Not precisely. Hmm. So what is this thing? A ritual. A ritual to bind the most powerful, to bind even the most powerful fiends to one's will. Well, I I imagine you might be interested in getting some, well, getting the person that wronged you. Um, Punished. Uh, is there anything you could 
tell us that might help us in that regard. Because clearly they seem to have amassed a large army of demons. She turns to like look over her, her shoulder at you, this time actually fixing you with a look, and says, um, We do not have much time, but I will start at the beginning. You would know us as the Sisterhood of Loth. I am the third among their leadership. The Dread Legion came to us, in need and desperate. The one they call Azrul petitioned us, and we gave him everything he needed. Tools, bodies, knowledge, everything he wanted to pursue his insane goal. We offered him shelter, helped him silence his dissenters and recruit more loyal members to his cult. We believed our assistance would blind him to our efforts to claim his knowledge for our own. But in the end, he betrayed us first. When we heard about your arrival in the Demon Web, we prepared to defend the school against you, but Azrael had other plans. His forces turned on us, using the slaughter and bloodshed to complete this ritual. He plans to dominate a being called the Ever Hunger the creature that guards the moor in the depths of the abyss, and turn it against you. He has likely already succeeded. During the fighting, he opened this portal, and tethered it with the souls of those he killed. It tore them apart, rending them down to essence and energy, destroying them utterly, save myself. I managed to use my magic to stabilize it, but the damage was already done. Eventually, my soul will be annihilated by this, and she like gestures to the strings in her hands, this tether, unless someone takes the, from, the burden from me and closes it. I'm sure he has no de bleh, excuse me. I'm sure he has no desire to fulfill that. On the other side, Azrael is no doubt preparing his ritual to bore into Tharazdun's prison and draw out the Mad God's essence. He anticipates you will try to stop him. He will be prepared. He believes himself so close to his goal, and that gives him confidence. Confidence that you may well be able to exploit. That's, that's what we're hoping. So, um, this portal leads deeper into the abyss, then? To the prison's doorstep. Mm. Mm. Without it, it would take weeks to reach the lower levels of the abyss. I do not believe you have that time. How long, will you, how long can you keep it open for? She put like uh, strains on the tethers for a, for a brief moment and says, um, "My soul is waning. I can hold it open for maybe a few more hours at a stretch." Oof. Uh, now that, that question is, do we? Like, as, as unpleasant as this environment is, this might be the last chance for, uh, for, uh, well, any sort of, uh, breather or reprieve or... You sort of watch as like sparks sputter from the the, the portal and and this this spirit's hands, um, and she sort of she she says um, uh, the strain is great, 
but it can be sustained with uh, or it, it can be sustained by another spellcaster. I do not know how long you have, though, until Azrael completes his goals. Should he succeed in taking Theros Dune's power, he will be unstoppable. Yes. Oh, this is... Ah, you're right. She... I think we have time for... Uh, we, we don't have time, do we? Uh, Doesn't she... sound like it. She turns her head to you, Elizabeth, and says, You are a spellcaster, are you not? Take these bonds from me, and I will tell you one last secret. I don't know about that. <laughs> but I what would that to... do to me? And I, like, I, I would need to go through the portal to help my friends. I can't. I can't hold it open and go through. Uh, give me an Arcana roll. Sorry about that. Somebody came in to talk to me. Um, so, yes. Uh, Elizabeth. Um, your... Um, so your understanding of what the, this spell that you're looking at is that this is essentially... Um, uh, this is a... Uh, a form of teleportation magic similar to what you are already capable of doing. Um, you could feed it an injection of magic which would stabilize it for maybe a matter of minutes, uh, which would break the tether and give you and your companions enough time to step through. Um, it would collapse immediately following that. But, uh, yeah. It, it, it's a one-way trip, whatever way you cut this. But Thousand's If he's truly gone after Thousand Dune, it's gonna be a one way trip anyway, because Isn't that the point where it's a struggle to get back with any kind of magic? Um, if you were to go into the prison itself, yes, but presumably this doesn't teleport into the prison because that would be kind of yeah, pointless. Right. Yeah. Because because yeah, because clearly there is a way out. Because the power, like Ferris Dune's power, is leaking out. So, so could we? So in theory, could we still? So we. So wait. Okay. So what? So what is exactly she asked me to do? Like she's still holding it open, isn't she? And she said she, she can hold it open for a few more hours. Uh. Well, she 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 estimates she has somewhere in the region of hours before her soul is completely annihilated by the energy of this tether, and the portal closes. Okay. Um. You you. Oh, I think I. Oh, I think I see. Okay. So yeah. Basically, what she's saying is, take it off me, go through, it'll collapse, and I'll live. Yeah. Well, she she will she will get to continue to exist as a soul rather than being completely oh. annihilated. And then I and then us stepping through would close the portal and it wouldn't have any further adverse effects on me. Yes, uh, but it would it would effectively cost you a seventh level spell slot. Okay. Okay. Well, I was gonna offer to use my magic instead, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would happily, uh, but no. Yeah. No, unfortunately, you I don't have then, a seventh level spell slot. I guess then Elizabeth like spends quite a while thinking about this um looks to her companions and just says well if we're going we should go yeah we should Are you sure you'll be alright to take this on I'm not holding it open so it's not gonna eat my soul and... yeah, I guess, yeah if, if we go through then she can drop it, and there's no, there's no problem here. And that way, she does. She, you know, still exists and can go on to afterlife, presumably. Yes. 
she she like she's returned to like sort of looking at the ground and focusing on maintaining these tethers. But as you say this, um, there is a hint of a smile on her ghostly visage, and she says, "An afterlife, yes. A few choice words with Lolf, I think." Well, is everybody ready? This is well, really going to be jumping go, in at the deep end. Before we go, like, well, because we're going to head through. You said you had one last thing to tell us. I know you said you'd only do it if we sustained the portal, but if we go through now, then you you will effectively be free anyway. What are you trying to say to her? Oh, but because think... she said, like, if um... no, so I need I need to take the tethers. That frees her soul, and then she can. Then she was going to say the thing. Yeah, it, 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 it we go through. It, yeah, like uh, Elizabeth will take the tethers. The portal will remain stable for a few for a matter of minutes. Um, oh, okay. And then she'll she'll say what she has to say. You step through. You part ways. Okay. Okay. Good. No. Okay. No, okay. I, I, I. I. Okay. That's good enough. Is everybody ready then? Well, I think uh, we, don't, we don't have much choice. Well, then, in case this hurts so much, I can't really talk. I um, I wish you luck in your few choice words, and then I guess she's gonna take the tethers. Okay, yeah, you 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 take the tethers, um, uh, and you but you basically feel um. The the energy behind this portal like um, feed on your your magic. Um, it doesn't hurt, um, but you you understand as you take this why this would hurt because if you were to hold this forever, this would eventually drain your magic until it was eating away at whatever energy it had left. Mm. So at the moment, it's just eating my magic. But if I run out of magic, it'll straight up just eat my soul. Yes. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But con considering you are alive, fully charged with magic, the the, yeah. the chan you'd have to stand there holding it for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you you take the tethers, you you hold it, the portal uh, stabilizes, and the the spirit like drops the tethers, um, draws herself up to her full height. Um, uh, and probably turns to you, Grim, recognising you as the leader, and says, um, Azrael already knows that he is nigh immortal thanks to the power he already possesses, both his magic and his phylacteries. But there, there has been one other in history who has already possessed this level of power and failed. Has there? She nods uh, and says, Thara's Dune. I should have seen that one coming. Um, <laughs> Perhaps. His prison yet holds. And Azrael has opened the way into it. Are you saying we could put Azrael in there as well? well that's what I'm thinking. She she lets out a, a very malicious smile and says, I would love to see the revenge that the mad god would take against his traitor servant, given the endless suffering of eternity at his disposal. Because I don't see how else we're going to... Well, because we haven't dealt with the phylacteries, so... This would be... This would be the best. Yeah, it, like it's the only way I see this is going to end. It's certainly the most efficient way to end it. I, for one, however, I'm not going to think about the torment part. Hmm. She nods and uh, ba basically turns towards the door. But by the time she like reaches the door, that her spirit has faded. And she's gone. Right. To you guys, and I'll be shutting it behind us, I guess. Okay. 
So I guess, one by one, you file through the portal. Yep. The spooky portal on top of the pile of corpses. Okay, it's not on top of the pile of corpses, it's behind the pile of corpses, but yes. <laughs> I mean, it's not great either way. It's not great either way. Yeah. I mean, it's better than climbing over a pile of corpses to get through the portal. But yes, you you step into the shimmering purple haze of the portal in front of you. And uh, the world twists and warps around you. Um, until you reach a situation where you find yourself... Your your balance is your sense of balance is restored, but you find yourself staring into a horizon that looks like you're f th staring forward feels like you're falling into the sky. Oh look, it's destiny. It's not destiny actually. Mm. Oh, I thought the person on the left was a hunter. Uh, no. <laughs> It does. It does. Uh, for those of you who have played Destiny, it is very reminiscent of the Ascendant Plane. Oh, fun! Um, as it is uh, floating rocks, um, the 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 very ambient force of gravity around you feels reduced. Um, there are uh, uh, ameth like shards of amethyst-like crystal that spurt up out of the ground and twist at, at, at odd angles. Um, and yeah, like as, as you're staring forwards, it, it feels like you you would fall away into nothing were you to let yourself go, um, despite the fact that you've, you are still firmly anchored to the ground. Um, and you realise that the, the, the light in front of you that you can see is almost blinding, but it is e eclipsed by a um, a sphere of perfect darkness. Um, if you have ever seen a black hole, or depictions of what a black hole should look like, uh, it looks like that in the distance. Well, Probably. modern science has indeed photographed a black hole, so I know it what has. they look like now. Um, but yes, it... it essentially looks like a, a black hole suspended in the middle of the air, and it is... looking at it is causing your vision to do all sorts of wonky things. Um, it also does not help that all around you um, these platforms that you are on, that, well, this platform that you are on that's made of stone appears to be drifting. Um, on an, what can only very loosely be described as a sea of stars... Um, looking down off the edge of this platform gives you a dizzying burst of vertigo as you are essentially staring into blackness with pinpricks of light that seem impossibly far away. Um, and you dread to think what would happen should you fall from this platform. Um... However, from the way that these platforms are sort of drifting around and seem otherwise unconnected from each other, you are going to have to take at least a few leaps of faith to proceed forwards on these platforms towards the, the void in front of you. Lovely. Well, time to check the compass, I guess. Uh, you... Uh, I have a feeling I know where it's pointing. You pull the compass, and it is pointing directly towards the uh, black towards the black hole. God damn it! Of course mm. it is. Well, at least we have a visual landmark to aim for, and we don't, you know, have to rely on this thing entirely. Yeah, I wonder how far in uh, they've already gotten. Or like, you know, like, there's no demons around, I think. Give me a perception roll. Well, I'm like, surely, surely you left the scout behind. Uh, normal perception. Okay. Um, so, uh, casting a glance around, um, 
it, it's very difficult to make anything out here because of the way that the environment is just constantly moving. Um, if this realm has any particular denizens, um, they either don't take a conventional shape that you are used to, um, or you cannot see them. Well, <sighs> well, I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm thinking some way of, um, you know, flying would be better than trying to jump from rock to rock. It most definitely would be. It's like lost an hour, right? Uh, fly itself lasts an hour, yes. Because at least that's, how, like, I assume that's what you're suggesting. Oh, no, up to, okay, no, fly is up to ten minutes. At ten minutes. A decidedly smaller amount of time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do have a. Yeah. I do have the theory for something that could last an hour, Shouldn't. but it's uh, it's a much. Um... That's, that's maybe what it, maybe what it, I guess it would be much better. It would be more ideal if we could, you know, at least reach the fight within, well, well within the hour, so that I can make use of the other effects it, that the spell would have. Namely, you know, me turning into something that can fly and just carry all of you. Mm. Oh, you're thinking the the true polymorph thing or something? Shape change. Shape change. Well, how about we see how far we can get without uh, any help? Because, like, is there too much void between the rocks? Or is it just more rocks? Um... Ordinarily, it seems like there would be too much for you to sort of cross normally, but the fact that, like, even taking a step here seems floatier than it would be normally. Um, you have confidence in your ability to make these jumps. Is the next, is, I mean, is the next rock that we would have to jump to uh, within 30 feet? Uh, yes, almost certainly. Um, okay, cool. I'd still rather teleport to it. <laughs> oh yeah, but you, you're just using your blink or your um, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Infinite well, misty yeah. Uh, Elizabeth could infinitely misty step across the 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 platforms until she gets to the thing. That's that's definitely a thing that could happen. Um, <laughs> I do, I do not like, have faith in my jumping. But yeah, I think you know, you know we, we're we're somewhat dexterous, well, athletic bunch. Um. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, be I believe you four could make the jumps. I just don't believe I could make the jumps. Yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't directed at you. Like, besides, like infinite, you know, jumps. There's no reason not to uh, to use well, it. Yeah, I know. So, but like that's. But I was just looking at the others, see, trying to gauge their confidence. Regardless of what we do, we should do it quickly. Well, I'm just, I'm just, like, you know, just try, you know, I'm giving like the the look of like any response to like uh, Arian Claris. I mean, I guess based on what I we can see from here, does it seem like any of the jumps are like stupidly long to make? Um, there there are reasonably enough platforms for you to start making your way at the very least. So, well, if. I guess if things go poorly, we can. We'll think of something in the moment. I hope. Um, I mean, yeah. I always have. I always have a panic option. If well, so do the. So do the other two. It's yeah. just Lyra and me. Uh, but this means I have to uh, show you guys how it's done. Uh, and uh, I, I guess wow. I'll just I'll, I'll just uh, run and jump to the first rock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Just told that overconfidence is the weakness of the guy we're fighting. This is not a time for you to get overconfident as well. Uh, so Grim, what is your athletic score? Uh, um, it is ten. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, I need to see how this works. Uh. 
give cool give time. me a give me an athletics roll and double it. Double it, okay. Um, just normal athletic. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, don't uh, don't double your. Uh, double the roll and then add your bonus. No, sorry. D double the bonus, not the roll. Oh. Oh, okay. So um, that would be thirty-five. Uh, yes, thirty-five. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, Grim effortlessly sails across the uh, across the gap. I guess I will teleport across the gap. Okay. Uh, I will follow suit with the run and jump. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what is your uh, flat bonus? Because if your f if your flat bonus doubled uh, is uh, over thirty, you will make it regardless. Uh, no. Okay, so <laughs> roll it. My five bonus is 11. Cool. Uh, so roll it then. Uh, so that is 34. Yes, easily. Yeah. Guess Lyra and I are jumping too. Cool. Uh, yeah, again, if, you're, if your skill is 15 or higher... Um, it's not... Okay. I, don't think <laughs> I don't think anyone has 15 or higher in anything. Uh, yeah, my highest is 12. Yeah. Oh, I thought somebody had a 15 in something. Never mind. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure Aya has a 15 to attack, but... Uh... Anyway. Oh, that's a 21. That is 21. That is still enough. Okay. <laughs> cool. Good. Uh, so it's like... But we needed a thirty. Uh, so yeah, Lyra, go ahead and uh, give us the roll, roll for Lyra as well. Uh, no, so the the actual relative difficulty of this is not very high. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Okay. Cool. Uh, oh yeah, and Lyra's not got a proficiency, so that is twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with that, I will say um, it is it is incredibly nerve wracking to jump over this and seemingly endless void from platform to platform. Um, but you manage to make good progress leaping from, from platform to platform, heading in this general direction, until uh, essentially uh, you, you probably travel, excuse me, probably travel for, for no more than two to three minutes um, before you see there is a, uh, a larger platform than most that is sort of like uh, coming in an arc of its rotation. Um, that appears to have a uh, a semi-transparent white dome that is covering a large uh, a, a large area on it. Hmm. Looking a little sus. I'm guessing that is where. Um, well, I, I really should look, give me a second. I I, I keep forgetting the name. Azrael. Azrael, I'm guessing that's where Azrael is. I'd say that's a safe, uh, a safe guess. Hmm. I mean, does it look like a magical barrier that I would recognise? Um, it does look like some sort of shield or ward. Yes. Cool. How far away is that? And can we get to it through our island hopping? Yes, you should be able to. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you continue your island hopping for maybe another minute more um, until you uh, you essentially round like a large cluster of crystals that is on one one island, uh, jump across to another slightly larger island, and you are basically on its doorstep. Um, and as you as you land on this island, uh, I will bring you to uh, oh I didn't realize I didn't put Lyra into this map. Let me do that real quick. Crime. Uh, don't forget Lyra. Bring back Doggo. Uh, let me just drag Lyra into the map real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, so you uh, jump from platform to platform until you are on this, uh, about to set foot on this slightly larger platform. And uh, between two large clusters of purple crystal, 
uh, you see this dome ahead of you. And this dome is essentially... Uh, it is covering a huge ritual circle uh, with three of those... Um, the massive uh, ritual pillars that you saw uh, previously in um, Tritherian's realm. Uh, three of these have been positioned around the outside of the ritual circle. Um, and there is a uh, like a thin line of energy that is coming off each one of them that is forming into a like a node at the center of this ritual circle um, that basically seems to be like uh, arcing energy off the inside of this um, uh, shielded dome, uh, which is causing it to like light up every now and again, but doesn't seem to like actually be affecting the um, uh, the resilience of the dome itself. Um, inside the dome, there appear to be a number of figures, um, uh, chief among them being uh, uh, two very large armoured figures um, who uh, bear a striking resemblance to the, um, uh, again, the creature that you fought during the ritual in Tritherian's realm. Um, except this time they are accompanied by what look like uh, massive scaled bats that have armor and harnesses attached to them, uh, seemingly appearing to be mounts of some kind. Um, scattered around the outside of the ritual circle, um, uh, tending to various things, appear to be a number of cultists, uh, who you recognize as wearing the traditional garb of the, uh, of the Dread Legion. And right in the center of the circle, uh, performing a series of like um, uh, arcane gestures, uh, is a uh, a humanoid figure uh, who is is wearing the again very similar clothing to one of the figures that you saw ab atop the the throne in uh, during the invasion of Tritharian's realm, um, and uh, as as the f four of you five of you come into sight, um, uh, a cry goes up from. Uh, one of these armored figures uh, uh, like points out across to you. Um, the the figure in the center finishes his gestures, turns and like drops his hood, um, and uh, you see a uh, an unsettling visage. Um, in that you see uh, what perhaps once could have been called a handsome human face uh, that has. Uh, long since, like fallen sallow around um, uh, uh, around the prominent bones in his skull. Um, but it also looks like um, efforts have been made to like almost like rehumanize his face. Uh, like it, it 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 appears to have been like padded and readjusted in certain places that gives it a a weirdly unnatural complexion to it. Um. And yeah, he 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 turns towards you, drops the hood, um, uh, looks up at the the four, the four of you, and smiles. Uh, gestures outwards towards you and says, "Ah, at last, the final guests have arrived for the end of the world." I was hoping you'd make it here in time, Amber Eagle. With you snapping doggedly at my heels for the last few months, it almost wouldn't seem right to have my victory without you here to see it. Uh, and as as he says this, the flesh at the corners of his mouth peel back with his smile, uh, unnaturally wide, revealing a warped skeletal grin that resembles a hundred knives. Gross. Hmm. Well, this dude's crazy. Well, no well, shit, he's trying to win the world. As far as I can tell, the world hasn't ended yet, so... Still time left to stop here. He he uh, he like dip, dips his head and like uh, and offers his hands like al almost like seemingly apologetically and sort of says ah well yes of course but I must say uh, I must say it's uh, well let me try that sentence again um, yeah he, he he dips his head like gestures with his hands and basically says ah you're quite right but. Um, 
I won't keep you waiting too long. You know, I actually should thank you. Without your interference with Nella, the Dread Legion would have never turned to look for a new prophet. One that could lead them all to a brave new reality like this. The Cabal, too. You know, they almost had me on the ropes at one point. So, I have to thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. And, um, thanks to you, I think we're finally going to be putting an end to this. One way or another. He, he, he nods along in agreement and says, yes, yes, quite. Um, and then, like, al like, almost seems to have a revelation and says, oh, and of course, we can't forget about your friend, the blacksmith. If it weren't for her stirring up all that trouble, I never would have uncovered this. And uh, from from his, behind him, he pulls a, uh, a, an, a long obsidian black longsword um, from a from a sheath on his back uh, and hold like holds it aloft as it like emits a sickly green haze. Um, he either sort of like flips it around, like slams it down in the the center of the circle, and um, uh, the the arcing energy that was crackling off the top of the um, the dome now shoots out of the top and uh, like fires off at an angle towards the um, uh, towards the black hole. Um, o over the 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 sound of the roaring energy, he he raises his voice and he says, "The last piece to my puzzle." Sadly, two artifacts and a handful of gems isn't enough to open the door to Thara's Dune's prison. But that was never my plan. All I need to do is, uh, crack a window. Of course, I couldn't risk everything hoping this ward would keep you out forever. Long enough for the ritual to succeed. So I did enlist a little help. Um, and at this point, uh, you'd notice that, like... As the as the island is sort of like uh, reaching it the apex of its rotation, it's sort of like leveling off, um, and from one corner of the island where it had been suspended just out of sight, uh, a huge figure it begins to pull itself up from the edge of the cliff. Uh, uh, a what looks like a massive uh, black stone and amethyst, um, uh, I guess, like studded almost uh, construct. It it appears to have like flesh underneath these stone and crystal like plates that line its body. Okay. Um, there is a a, a huge uh, like crystalline form that looks like half half like demon like half dragon like. In that it has long curling horns, a long jaw, um, uh, a, a wingspan that must cover a, a good tens of feet, um, pulls itself up and onto the platform. Uh, and uh, Azrael gestures and continues, Say hello to the ever hunger, Amber Eagle. He's been dying to meet you. Um and with that, uh, I think we'll start some initiative. You know, somehow I didn't expect a dragon in this fight, and I don't know why. I, like, not a, not like a, a dragon. A... Well, it's, okay, it's not a dragon. Like... But like... It's close. It's as close to a dragon without being a dragon. I mean, yeah. it's, it's the internal hunger. You've basically summoned Alduin. That's what you've done. <laughs> you've made stone Alduin. I hope you're proud of yourself. Oh, here's the destiny. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna refresh roll twenty and join, re leave and rejoin the call because I think my internet was dying for a second, so I'll be like, okay, okay. cool. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, I know this guy is now called the Ever Hunger, but to me, he's Stone Alduin. Okay. Oh, the Ever Hunger. Well, I mean, because that's what Alduin was, basically. He was an ever-hungry dragon. He was just trying to eat the world. I honestly don't know who you're referring to. The big dragon from Alduin, Skyrim. The, big, the final boss of Skyrim. I have never played uh... Skyrim. And I will never play Skyrim, so... <laughs> you know. Todd Howard is on his way to your house. Yep. Good. 
I have some words for him. He's on install. He's on his way to install Skyrim to your Mac, and your Switch, and your fridge, and your, fridge. And your phone, and yep. your fridge. And your phone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and soon your mind. Yeah. <laughs> That's the next he'll step just of his, directly of his plan. into my brain. You, you'll just be lying in bed at night, and he'll he'll lean in and whisper in your ear, "See that mountain? You can climb it." <laughs> <laughs> it just it just works. It just works. Honestly, <laughs> it just works. Todd Howard appearing in my bedroom is like top five nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I can understand like some people appearing in your bedroom, but why Todd Howard? Of all people? <laughs> just surely weird. like e- surely like Elon Musk. That would be worse. Eh. Like, I, eh. like if, 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 if Todd Howard is in your top five nightmares, did Todd Howard, like, ruin your life personally? No, he's just a weird, he's just a weird dude. I mean, anyway. Elon Musk, like, my, my brother knows Elon Musk, so that'd be, I feel like that'd be less weird somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, opening with Elizabeth. Yay. Okay. Um, oh, and I need to uh, make sure oh, I add is, uh, a thing. This is striking me as a time for uh, for uh, the big guns. Yeah, I'd say so. So, um... Uh, also, this is like, you know, striking me as a climactic final battle between hero and bad guy. So, we need the classic hero-bad guy banter. And shitty one-liners. So, um... Elizabeth's gonna say, "Well, if we're get if we're getting like this, allow me to get changed first. Um, and I'm gonna cast shape change. Okay. Make me a storm giant quintessent again. Okay. Uh, storm giant quintessent. Uh, I had a thing for that, and I've lost it." I'll just search for it. Ah, oh, there we go. Storm Giant Quintessent. This is the one you should have control of. I do. Look at that. It's right uh, there. Okay, I'm going to drag you off to the side, and there you go. Um, and I believe there's a Storm Giant. thingy for it somewhere. There it is. Garage sheet. Cool. Um... And there it is. Um. Oh, it's also giving me a bar. That's nice. Nice. Uh, yes, it should have everything. Um. So yeah, that is that is my action. Okay. Um. And you know what? I'm. I guess for dramatic flair. Um. She'll, like, rise ten feet into the air. Okay. You rise ten feet into the air. Um, uh, I think I can mark that. Uh, I can do that. Set flight height ten. All right, yeah. Oh, there you go. And I guess she just goes, much better. <laughs> you say booming across the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the battlefield. Uh, okay. Uh, on initiative count... Oh, wait, hang on. I did it wrong. <laughs> on initiative uh, count 40... Um, wait, don't you get to move? Oh, I yes. Get to move, but I'm... Are you just oh, not... you're not moving. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was, that was, my, that was my floating ten feet in the air. That was my movement. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there we go. At uh, initiative count 20, uh, the... Uh, wait, hang on. It's not on this sheet. It's on my other sheet. Uh... Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, the Everhunger will pull itself up onto the platform fully, and uh, as it does so, it um, uh, it basically like lets loose a, a bellowing roar uh, that you immediately notice that uh, basically uh, every crystal within like a, a radius of the, uh, the Everhunger basically like begins to resonate uh, with basically like massive energy spikes um to the point where uh like basically everything within 120 feet of the the everhunger uh, begins to spark with electricity 
Uh, so I need a, I think it's a constitution saving throw. Uh, yes, a constitution saving throw from everybody within 120 feet of the Everhunger, please. Uh, which is everyone? Which is everyone. Which is everyone. Yeah. Okay. It's, like, it's basically the yep. entire map, to be honest. <laughs> um. It's not quite the whole map. It does end just short of Lyra, just over here. Uh, con save. Con saves. Oof, not great. Okay. Oh, uh, you get uh, plus three from. Yeah, everybody gets a plus three to that. Uh, plus Elizabeth. Plus. Yeah. Well, mine's built yeah. into my rolls. So. Uh, everyone except Grim fails. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Um. Twenty two is not enough. Uh, everyone takes. Oh wow, that's awful. Seven lightning damage, and Grim <laughs> oh. takes half of that. Uh, <laughs> that was. Um... We round down, right? For damage. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes, because Kalaris takes half of it anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth, check your resistances in your new form, because I don't know. Oh yeah, true. I, I, it, it is uh, like having passed. They take nothing, right? No, uh, yeah. you oh. you take half. Oh, Actually, I if do it's lightning half. damage, I take nothing. Okay, this is lightning damage, you take nothing. Cool. I'm immune to lightning. Oof. That's cool, I was about to make a concentration uh, check, but I don't need to, I didn't take damage. Cool. Well, that was his lair action. Uh, now it's his turn. Uh, so he will fly... Uh, I think it's 60 feet he can fly. Uh... Uh, uh, 30 foot reach. Okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, not quite. Uh, in that case, uh, he will just, uh, basically charge up his, um, so, like, uh, after doing the roar, you notice that the, um, the, the Everhunger is, like, sparking with, um, like, uh, arcs of this, um, purple, like, uh, energy. Um, like, the, it, it almost seems to be, like, conducted through the crystals and plates that he is constructed of. Um, and, uh, he raises his head up into the air and spits three bolts of energy into the air that then come crashing down as thunderbolts. Um... Uh, he will target, I guess, uh, Kalaris, Grim, and Aya with these. I need dexterity saving throws, please. Um, are these AoEs? No, single target. Three single target bolts. Because I add a plus three? Or... Yeah, plus oh, three. Oh, it was really good, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice job. Uh, oh, yeah, and plus, actually, plus six, because Kalaris. Okay, so... Uh, in that case, Aya and Grim pass. Kalaris does not. Fair enough. Uh, you will take uh, 13 lightning damage if you failed, or half if you succeeded. Uh, and technically, Grim takes uh, Grim and Aya, I believe, take none because of it being a single target spell. Or single target ability. And still takes half. Uh, so, so only Kalaris takes half. So it's like bam, bam, bam. Gr uh, like Grim and I like throw themselves to the side to avoid these bolts of lightning that just hit the ground. Kalaris just like it, like is struck by one, but just like is stood there just sparking slightly. I've also just noticed I have a thing for con. I actually have uh, more of a bonus to con saves. So yeah. I have to remember that next uh, time. So that is the Everhunger's movement and action. Uh, end of its turn. Okay. I'm going to move over here <laughs> and uh, use my Carapace Breaker. Okay. And shoot that thing. Uh, cool. I'm going to change up the music because that music gets repetitive quickly. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, okay, so roll me some damage. 16 piercing damage. Cool. And he takes a permanent minus 2 to his AC, I believe. Yes, for one minute. 
Cool. And then, is he low enough for Lyra to bite him? Uh, yes. He, I don't so, think she can make it there. Uh, she can make a. She could make a running jump if she wanted to. Uh, I think that's far enough that she doesn't need to make a check. And far okay. enough of a run up, I think. Uh, but yeah, he 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 basically like jumped up into the air, like flapped his wings to fly forwards, and then landed again. Right. Uh, that is a success, thanks to Carapace Breaker. Yay, Carapace Breaker. <laughs> I was trying to get that AC lower, because I knew it was going to be fucking awful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, this, this is the perfect time. Okay, Lyra, Lyra like, r does a running jump across the platform and, like, tears into the, the obsidian plating of this um, creature. Uh... Oh, one more thing. Do... Do I know what this thing is? Like, is it a demon or a fiend? Can I roll for that? Uh, I mean, you can... Uh, yeah, I guess g give me a nature roll. Okay. <laughs> Just asking. Uh, okay, you have no idea. Okay, great. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Alright, uh, that's the end of my turn. Uh, cool. Uh, I guess at the end of your turn... Uh... Uh, yeah, at the end of your turn, it will expend... The Everhunger will spend two legendary actions and will once again do uh, three bolts of lightning... One, two, three, at uh, Aya Grim Kalaris again. So, deck saving throws, please. It's not great, Arya. It's not great. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not getting the bonus anymore. Yeah, because you're no. far away. Uh, so, gr only Grim succeeds this time. Uh, so... Uh, 14 lightning damage. Uh, reduced as appropriate. For those of you who, who can. Yes. Actually, I think mine takes a reaction, so I can only do it once. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, as, uh, as, as I believe does I is. Uh, but I got hit by it anyway, so... Yeah. Uh, Grim, it's your turn. Well, I'm going to start by... How do I do I... Oh, oh no, what am I doing? Okay, well, that's fine, I'll fix that later. Uh, I'll start by making myself bigger. Okay. Uh, uh, gonna be a big boy. Grim goes big. And... <laughs> Look, it's the only way medium. to describe it. Grim goes medium. Uh, I go medium sized and one, two, three. Oh my wait, it was one, two, three, four, five. And kind of like early on the edge here. Six. There we go. I don't know if I need to roll for the jump. Uh no, not if you're medium sized. Medium power. Also, ignite the sword. Okay, you light up the sword. Uh, the uh, at the end of your turn, the Everhunger will use its remaining legendary action uh, to uh, lash out with one of its uh, claws. Um, and you notice that uh, when it uh, when it lashes forward with its arm, um, its arm basically disjoints. Um, like the plates come apart, and um, it essentially becomes like a stream of elongated energy with a claw on the end of it, um, and it grabs at you. Uh... Uh, that is a twenty-seven to hit. Oh my 
my god. That is an F. Okay, you take 13 bludgeoning damage. I'm gonna go uh, ahead and assume that's magical. Uh, this part is not. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, it is literally just grabbing you. Uh, however, oh. you are grappled. Ah, okay. Oh, I almost forgot this. Interesting. Well, um... Oh. Yeah, that's fine. Um... Also, Lyra powers, maybe... What? Oh, your legendary action he's referring to, I believe. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, I didn't know if it was the end of your turn, but yes. Uh, well, Every... oh, yeah, like... the, the Everhunger just used its legendary action, so you can now use yours if you want okay. to. Yes. Um, it's 2d4, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually in range to take advantage of this. Nice. Seven. Okay. Seven uh... temporary hit points. So what is this? What is, what is this third bar of mine tracking? I don't even know. Yeah, I literally. Oh, three of three. It's legendary actions. That's oh, it's it's, it's legendary actions, but you don't have the legendary actions. Yeah, it's just because it's part of the stat sheet. Yeah. Uh, you can off. you can delete that if you want to replace it with something else. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to replace it with the temporary hit points. Yeah, do it. Bam. Seven of seven temporary hit points. Okay. Nice. Uh, Kalaris. Um, I I just a quick clarification. This white ring over here is like a barrier, still, right? Uh, is yes, it, it it is a it is a bar like a dome shaped barrier over the okay. ritual. Uh... We're probably doing all of our brawling in the next yeah. hour. <laughs> if I had to a... take a guess, probably. yeah, I would say so. But yeah, I think they're doing. I think I think they must have a um. A uh, Helm of Saint Fourteen Titan. <laughs> wow, I hate it's not purple. <laughs> <laughs> it's white. <laughs> but, uh, but I still wanted to make those sense. crystals. By the way, will block your movement. They are like uh, maybe oh, five or so feet high. They tall. Oh, they're like as tall well, as you are. Okay. Well, I wanna, I wanna do the thing that I haven't done yet. Um, for hitting level twenty. <laughs> Oh, okay. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So, yeah. you're going to reach inside to the fragment of power you were obtained previously. Yeah, and I think like I do it. I think I do it like mid run, just for you know effect, because <laughs> it looks cool okay. that way in my head. So, so do you want? Do you want to describe what you look like doing this, or shall I? Oh, it's does Kalaris uh, get an anime transformation sequence? Is that what's happening here? You you can describe it because <laughs> I mean I think like it. I, I can. I'll start it and just say like I think. I just start to run for, like, sort out running forward, and maybe like there's kind of a glow. <laughs> yeah. To okay. Start. Yeah, yeah. So, so like you, you, you have like sh shield on one arm, sword on the other. With your shield hand, you sort of like reach up and you grasp the the holy symbol, and um, you basically watch as um, Kalaris's outline begins to uh, like fuzz with uh, with light. Um, and uh, essentially, she, a, a pair of radiant wings burst forth oh, um, from Kalaris's back, along with um, what looks like uh, like a, a, a shimmering halo behind her that folds out like long red hair. Um, oh and yes, uh, Kalaris becomes the avatar of Tritherian briefly. Behold, the angel of vengeance. Indeed. Yes. I can do some things. Hold on. <laughs> First of all, I can move really far, <laughs> but farther I than I. Something. I'm going to assume that even flying like over the crystals within sixty feet, like I can. Oh well, I guess I can. Get yeah, I, I, I'll say for for ease of like pathing, you can do it. Okay. Yeah. So I'll probably just like over the crystals. Oops, not that far. Yeah. Um. So I have an aura. Uh, you do. Uh, so the first time an enemy creature enters the aura or starts its turn there during a battle, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of me. Okay, so that'll happen on its turn. Yes, I was going to ask, uh, the, it's the whole enters the aura, does that count if I move into its face, yeah. but I assume not. Uh, it okay. does not. Uh, what is what is the diameter of that? A 30, yeah, 30 feet. The same as all my other... <laughs> and like pretty much every other aura. Uh, okay. 30 feet. <laughs> Nothing outside of 30 feet. 
Uh, nope, not that. Uh, there you yeah, go. I guess, as I, oh jeez, okay, yeah. Uh, as I kind of just, like, come down, I'll just swing. Okay. Yeah, you leap from the skies, bringing the sword down. Wow, that's bad. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Second one fine, hits. It's fine. <laughs> you were too blinded by your own radiance. I know, I was too excited. <laughs> I misjudged how far I could go. I, 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 I think it I think it's more that like the creature's wing comes out to like deflect the first swing, but then you're able to sort of lodge the blade in. Uh nice. minus twenty one. Okay. Um I need to make a decision here because uh this is technically a fiend, but it's also what's known as a Titan. Um oh. which means Titan is technically its type. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say you still get the bonus radiant damage for it being a fiend, um, okay. but I'm gonna say it's immune to the banish effect because of being a titan. Okay, that's fair enough. I will take the extra damage. Uh, Do you imagine if we could just destroy the ever hunger like right in front of him? That would that'd be, like, be kind of wild. Like, that would be like such a fucking flex, wouldn't it? Like. Clarazan's <laughs> yeah. final blow, it dissipates into nothing with a scream, and we will get we'll get to stand there like. What do you got next, bitch? <laughs> Come at us, bro. Well, what I, I feel like I feel like all this be like, well, just try get in here. Good luck. Um, <laughs> I'm not coming out. Oh wait, I'm sorry. That's an action to do the thing. I can't actually attack this turn. I'm oh, so okay. sorry. That's fine. I thought about it and I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> that must be an action to do. Well, okay. I'm here though. <laughs> I You're am there. physically here. You are right there. Yeah. Okay. You never know with, uh, um, these powerful things. Elizabeth, you're up. Yeah. Cool. So I can fly up to here. Okay. Um, I'm assuming I'm not flanking with Kolaris, though. No. Yeah, not quite. Um, and, oh, well, actually, I just realized as well, I was. I was about. I'd actually, I'd actually rather be over a little bit. Okay. More like there. Sure. Because guess who can still fucking reach the dragon from here? That's right. Yep. It's me. Okay. Giant, li giant lightning sword. I don't predict this will be too effective. Okay. You, know, you come. Find out first. You come to the giant lightning sword and swing it. Go ahead. Wham. Okay. Wham. Uh, the both of those hit, and you watch as l the crackling lightning like. Bursts through the ever hunger, and it doesn't care. Yep, <laughs> figured. But that's fine because yeah. I don't care what it does either. And instead, she, I'm just gonna like look at the ever hunger and go like, "Come on, then, bring it." Okay, you might regret that. Uh, uh, when have we learned about taunting dragons? As evidently oh, nothing. Yeah. I'd rather it attack me than attack you. Uh, the the Everhunger absorbs the the electricity that uh, Elizabeth's uh, quintessent form like sent roiling through its body, um, and it it seems to like focus for a moment, and then the uh, like the 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 mouth on its chest plate uh, basically like drops open, and a wave of purple energy erupts from the Everhunger. Uh, everything within 60 feet of the Everhunger has vulnerability to lightning damage. Oh. Oh, that sucks. Does that replace immunities? It does. Wow. That's strong. See, this is how quickly things... You have to take your words back. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I was gonna say, don't taunt the dragon! <laughs> so, everybody get a blue circle, and if you take lightning damage... Not uh, me. Uh, well, yeah, everyone except Arya. Um, uh, if you take lightning damage from uh, and from now until the next time the initiative tracker runs around, you take it twice. Damn. Oh, that really sucks ass, huh? Yes. Wait, you take it twice and you're vulnerable. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, you, you, the, the vulnerability is effectively you take oh. it twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you take yeah, double damage. Take double. Yeah. It's because you said you take it twice, so it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Double-double? Yeah. Double? No. Double-double? No. Just, just doubled once. <laughs> double? Uh, 
Speaking of which, the Everhunger's turn comes back around. It gets its legendary actions. Oof. And... Uh, I think it will... Uh, okay, so it's it's got Grim grappled with one uh, claw. It will uh, turn around and try and grab Kalaris as well. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, it's supposed to make a save to see if it's frightened of you, right? Oh, yes. It's yes. immune to being frightened, unfortunately. <laughs> fuck! <laughs> The <laughs> first time she gets to use it, it's just like, no, fuck you. I, I, I don't think anything is going to be frightened down here. I mean, the little small guys I mean, might. Oh I mean, yeah, the fucking cultists. Um, oh, quick! If you move, if you move a little like closer to the orb, your your aura will like transfer over, and you can just scare the shit out of them while they're in there. Right? <laughs> that's, that's assuming it goes through. I, I don't think she needs the aura currently to scare the shit out of them. Um, <laughs> uh, twenty-four to hit Kalaris. That does hit. Okay, uh, 23 bludgeoning, and you are also grappled. That's cool. 16. Sorry, I had to math the <laughs> temporary hit points. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, it can do that a... Uh, well, it, it'll use the... It, uh, it'll... Oh, no, wait, no, it could, uh, yes, it'll take one more swing, because even though both of its hands are full, uh, basically uh, it, it whips around its tail, which you now realize also has a uh, five-pointed talon on the, the end of it, and oh, it tries to grapple good. into Elizabeth's shoulder. Oh, wow. It can reach me from pretty far, then. Uh, it can. It can reach up to 30 feet away because of its extendo arms. Oh, my All right, God. Extendo uh, arms. <laughs> th a 31 to hit, Elizabeth. Yeah, that does hit. Uh, 20 bludgeoning. Uh, and you are also considered grappled. Well, this is interesting. Um, and it because it already has used grapple on Grim, it is going to use fling. <laughs> Oh no! Don't Don't like please do gnome. not throw the gnome. <laughs> Goodbye, Grim. Yeet gnome singles in your area. Yeet gnome <laughs> singles. Uh... It's gonna throw Grim thirty-five feet into the crystals. I'm, not, I'm never gonna reach it. Uh... You take uh, nine bludgeoning damage. Uh, uh, I think that's also not magical. It's it? also not magical. Nice. Uh, and I need you to make a dex saving throw or be knocked prone. Ah, okay. Uh... Oh, no, sorry. No, that's only if you hit another person. So ignore oh, okay. that. <laughs> he, like, slams back first into it and lands on his feet, still fine. Yeah, just Roll boosh. Down. Yeah, you, you, you basically like do you, you you get knocked back as into the crystal. The crystal cracks and then you just superhero landing it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even break my ten hit points. Uh that is the Everhunger's turn. Ah oh, yeah. Okay. Also, yeah, is his tail non-magical still? Is his tail non-magical? What do you mean? The damage? Yeah, yeah the damage. Yes. I just realized I need some help. Oh, yes. Yeah, you, you only take reduced damage from it. Uh, you do need to make a con save for it, right? Uh, oh, yeah, I do. For concentration. Not that it's difficult. It's DC 10, but... And I get advantage. Nice. Success. Actually, that wasn't even a save. That was a 17. Cool. I forgot to do the save again. I just rolled Khan. Cool. Well, All right. oh yeah, what's your team? I would like to cast Conjure Valley. Okay. So you pull a handful of arrows from your quiver and release them? Uh, it has to take a dex save. Okay. Uh, it will do that. Uh, ooh, that is a success. Okay, it takes half as much of this damage that I'm about to Okay. Roll. 
Oh, you already rolled it. It's 34. Yeah, it's been rolled oh, as right. part of it. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so it takes half of 34, which would be 17. Okay. So Aya, like, looses a hail of arrows that, like, comes bombarding down on the Everhunger. The Everhunger, like, brings up its wings to shield itself. Um, but you do watch, like, a couple of arrows, like, embed itself in the, um, the, the elasticated energy flesh underneath it. And then Lyra would like to chomp. Go for it. I said chomp. There we go. <laughs> uh, that is a hit, thanks to Carapace Breaker. Shout out to Carapace Breaker again. Shout out to Carapace Breaker again. Shout out, Shout out. to Carapace Breaker. Cool. And then after Grim Grim's turn, I'll give you all hit points again. Uh, cool. Well, at the end of Aya's turn, uh, the Everhunger is going to use a legendary action. And uh, I think it will use a legendary action to yeet Kalaris. Stop yeeting people! <laughs> Stop it! Yeez. No yeets. Uh, Stop it! 100 do not yeet. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, it does not manage to connect with anything, but it just yeet you 60 feet. Wow. Damn. Well, you can right. come skidding no. to a halt on the island. Uh, you are no longer grappled. Uh, Grim, it is your turn. Well, I guess it's time to do the one thing I will be able to do. Or I guess I could do many things, but this is the thing I will do. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So I'm gonna run up and um, let's let's make it rain with darts. <laughs> to make it rain, pointy <laughs> <laughs> rain. Okay. Um, I'll just roll four times. I I have a hunch it's not gonna die. Uh, yeah, I think you're pretty good on that hunch. They are all hits. And one more. So. Okay, so that is minus nine. Oh wait, these are non-magical, right? Uh, these are non-magical. Unfortunately, the hail of darts bounces off the Everhunger's hide. Ah oh, wow. shit, he's lead. You should have brought anti-lead mini. mini. But, <laughs> but I don't have any. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oof. That's a balloons joke. Um, and, well, I guess that's pretty much it. That's basically what you can do. Well, I guess there is one f thing I can do. Despite not actually hurting the creature, I can still go to it. You can, yes. <laughs> mm. uh, it does have to make a wisdom saving throw against goading. It's an 18. Uh, wisdom save. It does succeed, unfortunately. Oh. Well... It was worth a shot. Yeah. It was worth a shot. Uh, Kalaris. Oh, sorry. At the end of Grim's turn, we were using Lyra's legendary action, yes? Yes. Go ahead and roll it. Is it, is it 30 feet? Yeah. Four. 30 feet. So, uh, Lyra, Grim, Elizabeth gets four temp hit points. Oh, nice. Uh, Claris, you're up. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just going to kind of, you know, uh, swoop back in, I suppose. Okay. Um, yeah, launch yourself back into the air with the wings. Just whoosh. Yeah, just kind of... You know, big old beetle wings. Now I can actually attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. There we go. Power of Christ compels you. <laughs> I'm gonna roll the d8s together for yeah. the extra rating. Man, is that okay? I yeah, sure. I just I just realized this this throwing mechanic is the closest I'll ever get to a boss stomp mechanic, and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so that is minus 13, minus 18, and then minus 14. Okay, uh, Claris, at the end of your turn, uh, the Everhunger will spit three bolts of lightning into the sky again uh, against Kalaris Lyra Grim. Uh, dexterity saving throws from three, please. Oh no, Lyra. That's 26. What? Uh, like, I feel like... <laughs> so close! <laughs> I'm still I'm still good. I'm happy. Okay. Uh, if you failed, which is everyone except Grim, take double that if you are... And Grim, I think double. you... I, I'm just going to reaction it. Yeah, you reaction it so you take nothing. So, uh, 46 lightning damage, except... Kalaris doesn't take the full 46 because halved because of... Oh, wait, no! No, because it, over it overwrites oh, yeah, your overwrites it, resistance. Yeah, yeah. yeah unfortunately. So... I wish it kind of, like, worked <laughs> as, like, a, it pushes you back to just being normal. No, Alas. it does not. It Alas. does It does overwrite. But, you know, but, uh, it was only one hit, right? So... Yeah. Oh, I meant more as in like it only lasts for one uh, one hit. Oh, uh, is it one hit or is it until oh, the I think, end? I think of it lasts until the, end, the next initiative. Oh, okay. yeah, it's it's when it's when the initiative ticks over. Um, yeah. Ah, okay. It's because this is lair action. Mind. Yeah. Oh wait, hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's Cal end of Calaris' turn, yes? It's Elizabeth's turn now. Right. I have an important question for you, Ferris. You do. What is it? If Grim is... is Given how big I am, and how strong I am now, um, is it a free action to pick up Grim? <laughs> uh, if Grim is a willing creature, then I would suppose so. I am mildly concerned. Because <laughs> Elizabeth's gonna... Okay. In that case, um, I... I'm gonna try and just break the grapple with raw strength, if I can. Uh, I think it is an action to do that. Yeah, but you just told me it's a free action to pick up Grim. Yeah, but like... So my, still... so the, well, yeah, but this is the thing. Look, I'm, I'm going to try and break the grapple anyway, so... Okay, great. Go, go ahead. Yeah, look, I've got a plan. It's a silly plan, but, you know, it might work. Are you going to pick me up and put me down? <laughs> Uh, you're, you're, you're next to the dragon that's now. Gonna be enough. That. Uh, where is the DC for. Escaping grapples contested, isn't it? No, it's not. Not oh, for right. monstered grapples. Oh, okay. Or not, or not for conditional grapples, which this is. Okay, yeah, I found it. It's. Oh, okay. uh, that is a success. Cool. And, that, and then Elizabeth's gonna go. So, Grim, how do you feel about going for a ride? <sighs> sure, just do it. Oh, yeah. No. In that case, I will scoop up Grim. Okay, you scoop Grim. Um, I'm also going to move around to the behind it with Grim. Okay. And I'm going to try and put Grim on its back. Okay. I... Uh, 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 huh, okay. I... <laughs> Grim is like, I have instant regrets. <laughs> the I mean... logic is, if, if Grim's on his back, he can't Mi easily move his legs like, to attack like... Grim. Mi Mini... I, I I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, is is Grim going ahead with this? Because you can definitely do that, but only if he decides to do it. Well, honestly, it's the only way he's not going to eat me away. So, I uh, I think it might be for the best. Okay. Plus, like you know, what, what's worse than having a mosquito on your back? A um, guy okay. with a dragon slaying sword on your back. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I can I can I just I guess, point yeah. out that this that the dragon like creature has a tail too. It does. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, but like, again, I I'm just, I, I get it. I'm not arguing against it. I'm just saying. So it is I'm very thinking, cool. <laughs> like I'm small, and if it misses, it might stab itself. It might not actually do anything <laughs> mechanically. But it'll make you feel better. Yeah, but it yeah. makes me feel better. <laughs> That's That's also, like, it means you. It you... means that Grim is now in position. That is, that is true. Grim this is, reminds Grim me of getting on top of the uh, Lionels in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
fucking uh, So, Elizabeth, is that your turn? Um, I don't think I have any bonus actions, so cool. yes. Uh, so in that case, the initiative will tick around. Uh, the f uh, lightning vulnerability will fade, so everyone go ahead and remove that from your token. No more blue dots. Um, however, as I was looking through his lair actions, deciding what he was going to do on this initiative, I realized he does have a boss stomp. Uh oh! Oh no! So I need everyone. I need everyone within sixty feet of uh, of the Everhunger to make a de strength saving throw. Oh strength saving throw. Okay. Uh, Leave me alone. Uh, I don't, I don't like you. <laughs> oh, go. shit. Grim's like, Ooh, fuck you. Grim. I'm on your back, bitch. I rolled, I rolled bad. <laughs> I, I, guess that's, like, I guess that's but... 20. Am I within? Yeah, I guess that's 20 for me. Yeah. Uh, oh, so... Aura, so... See, if this is actually a Destiny boss stomp, then I'm dead. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you are about to get architected <laughs> so hard. Just... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Guardian down. <laughs> but but the, the guardian down message comes at like a delay because yep. <laughs> it doesn't. Yep. It's trying to process what happens. Rest in peace, my two hundred and twenty-seven hit points. Yeah, you you get instantly physics killed. You just you get stomped so hard that your ghost actually respawns in the previous section, so you can't be going <laughs> can't go and res you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sh shout outs to uh, the inverted spire and that actually being a thing on the boss fight. God. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he literally he he do, does the big stomp, uh, which is gonna shove literally everyone except Grim. Um, nice. te technically, even if you succeed this, it should shove you ten feet. But I'm just so in love with the idea of Grim just planting his sword <laughs> in the back and hanging on for dear life. I'm gonna ignore it. <laughs> nice. Oh, good. Excellent. Uh, Dragon Rider Grim. In a way, this solves a problem I was gonna I was about to have. So. So, uh, I'm gonna say it shoves Elizabeth back to there, and <laughs> Kilaris. I'm sorry, but <laughs> what <are you> doing? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Honestly, like it's better that it happens to me because I have so much movement right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like a huge issue. It's just a little. Also, I kind of wanted to be far away. Uh, I'm gonna roll this once for both. Lyra and Elizabeth. Uh, uh, take 16 bludgeoning damage. Magical? No. Just just from physics. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just like a warlock glide myself to not Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Surely, surely Kalaris is a titan. I mean... <laughs> uh, you do kind like, of get well, like you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you do get well, and you do have Dawnblade. Fair enough. You're a warlock now. <laughs> just, just do that thing where you just swing your sword while you're flying to just cancel all the movement. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Terrible. If Freedom's Tongue fired like flaming sword projectiles, it'd officially be the coolest magic sword of all time. Also, probably be a little bit broken. It would. That's why it'd be so. Uh, cool. So it is now the Everhunger's turn. Uh, I'm alone. I'm a danger. <laughs> oh, I'm, danger. I'm in danger. <laughs> like, I guess if it's, you know, if, if it's going to attack me, I'll just use a point of luck just to you know in advance, which gives it disadvantage. Uh. Oh, so you're you're using a point of luck to get to grant it disadvantage on the attack roll it's making? Is that yes, what you're saying? Okay. It, like if it's attacking me, at least. Like I don't know yet, but I know I need to say it in advance. But like, it's uh... sort of like I'm just gonna. No, it's actually <laughs> gonna rodeo you, uh, yeehaw, motherfucker. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, honestly, it is it is probably going to it, like its first attack will definitely be to try and grab you. Uh, so. Oh, unfortunately, even with disadvantage, that is a success. It oh, rolled a tw twenty-nine and a twenty-eight. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That, that will do. Uh, so it grabs you twenty bludgeoning damage. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the problem. I uh, I can't put it put him on put him on his back. Uh, 
and then have him act immediately. The dragon gets to go. Here we go. And then goodbye, temp hit points. Uh, I need to read how this actually works. Uh, okay, so it can just use fling immediately after it grapples. Okay. Uh, in that case, it will do just that. Uh, well, hang on, actually. Man, this, is, this is just one of those really annoying bosses. Oh, too far. Um, oh, but you know who isn't too far? Oh, no. It's going to yeet oh. you at Kalaris. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Grim. Uh, so, that means I need Kalaris to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Catch Grim. Catch Grim. Do I also need to catch the no like a football? Or... Uh, no, it, it, this is literally for Kalaris to not be hit in the face by you flying towards her at high okay. speed. Um, uh, he literally like fastballs you directly into Kalaris for 27 damage each. Damn. Oof. Uh, and Kalaris, you are prone. Okay, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. It does half your movement. Weirdly, though, it doesn't knock Grim prone. <laughs> don't don't ask me why. Because Grim is now stood on Kalaris's chest. That's why. Like, yeah, soft landing. Uh, and the air of a hunger is gonna wander over here. Plate oh, oh, hello. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think plate armor is a soft landing. And no, but Kalaris budges more than a crystal. Uh, Thirty-three to hit you, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another another twenty bludgeoning damage and uh, grappled. He's a real bastard. Hey, he's he's literally called the Everhunger. He is defending a prison at the end of the universe. Did you really think he was going to be easy? No. I mean, like, with the Everhunger, you'd imagine him like chewing on you, not like eating you away. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't had a chance to bite anybody yet. Well, don't don't make me use the us. bite. <laughs> that's because he's too busy eating us, for fuck's sake. You don't want me to use the bite, believe me. No, I don't. Uh, Aya, you're up. I would like to cast Flame Arrows on my bow. Okay, you're casting Flame Arrows? Um, yes. And then... Okay. I'm going to shoot. Uh, you cannot currently see him because he is behind the crystals. I'm going to move! <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, like... Here? Can I see him from? Uh, he will get cover if you shoot him from there. But yes. Mm. Try to think. It's, move, move more like. Yeah. I was gonna say, if like down here, is that better? That's better. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. I assume that's a hit. That is a hit. Okay, and the fire damage. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. So you Just drop. To squeeze as much damage as possible out of him. Yep. You land another solid arrow that embeds itself. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Oh no, uh, you've got you got Lyra oh, you can use. So. Um. Okay, she, she can make it. Make it. Bite so it. Hops the gap get... again. Uh, Does she get advantage? That technically is flanking, so yes. So that is a crit. Uh, 14 plus 7, so that's 21. Uh, cool. At the end of Aya's turn, uh, the Everhunger will. Uh, once again, like, uh, uh, the uh, mouth in its chest plate opens up, and a, um, this time instead of a, uh, uh, a wave of energy that bursts forth, um, it basically begins to just uh, let out a, uh, uh, like a, 
I guess it's like a, a, a very fine green mist um, that, as it begins to like uh, disperse into the air, quickly thickens. Um, it creates a 60-foot radius. Uh, let me do this on its actual token. Uh... 60 foot radius is 120 diameter, yes. Uh, can you see that? Oh god, that's fucking huge. Is that no. really that big? Can't see well, it. Well, if it's the wood, like if it's, sorry, how much do you say? 120? That would make, that would be about right. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's supposed, hmm, uh, that's not right. It's supposed to be a 60 foot radius, but that's, oh, there we go, that's, Correct. Uh, so wow, actually, this is uh, Aya is technically in this as well. Damn it! Uh, cool. Uh, well. Uh, buh, 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 buh. uh. So for all of you except the Everhunger, this is now considered heavily obscured. Uh, which is, I think, disadvantage on literally everything that you try to do that targets it. Um, do does my ranger stuff cancel that out though? Oh, close enough for blind uh, yeah. If you get closer, your blind sight will kick in. Yes. Um. So you'll have to close the distance. Um, and every creature other than the ever hunger that ends its turn. Oh, except so that's on the end of your turn. Okay, cool. Uh, Grim, you're up. I did. Was that the answer to my question? Uh, yeah, you, you, your blind sight will kick in if you move close enough to the Everhunger, yes. Because, like, isn't that 30 feet? I forget how much your blind sight is. Yeah, check how much blind sight you have, because you'll need to move within the range. But Well, into darkness we go. Wish uh, that is a dash. Okay. So you yeah. run into the cloud? Uh, that's all I can do. Uh, cool. Uh, make me a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, so as you dive into the cloud, uh, you immediately feel your lungs begin to seize and burn. As you take uh, 15 poison damage. Uh, Kalaris. Um, I'm going to well, I'm going to get up, first of all. Yeah, <laughs> um, you stand up. You know, the important first step is to stand up. Um, and I think that I'm going to just pop to this island for now. Uh, and give myself some hit points back because I took a little bit of a beating. <laughs> Just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. the fuck is Cure Wounds because I never use it. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just give myself or well, sorry, I'll just use Cure Wounds uh, at I suppose second level. Okay. Yeah. Which I need to remember how that because it's been a hot second. Oh, it'll just auto-complete it. That's nice. Well, shit. That sucks. Uh, that does suck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's... five is better than nothing. Uh, is this, like, I guess that's, like, true. It's technically it's true, but it's fine. It's not great. Uh, cool. Okay, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okie doke. Yeah. Uh, in that case, that takes us to the top of the round, and we will pause for a quick break. Thank you. Oh. Well, I don't think anybody's in range.
Well, I guess Elizabeth's in range. 